Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. I would like to do a coloring chat out of a book that I just did um, a review of. It was uh, two of Such and Such Deva's books and one by his wife, Prache Dewan Such Deva. And I mentioned in that flip through video that we would hopefully be doing a color and chat out of this book. So if you have not seen that flip through video and you'd like to see all of the, all three of those books, just look in my playlist of flip throughs. Now I did do the first few pictures in here because <laughs> these are the three by three millimeter just like Belba family books and I love those you know that so yeah I was having a lot of fun <laughs> so I did the first couple pictures in here did that one these are all with the Arteza ink onyx my fave Then I just finished this one and started working on this one. So I thought we would continue working on this while I just kind of had it a little chat with you guys. So I think I just finished up with number 11s. So we will go on to number 12. And of course your color palette is always opposite of the picture. So when you see the color palette this way, you know it is a uh, horizontal picture, a landscape picture versus a portrait. Okie dokie. So let's zoom in a little bit. All right, so. Okay, let's get number 12 out, which is yellow. And you know me, I have to have my colors figured out ahead of time. <laughs> All right, so how is everybody doing? I hope you are all well. Let's see. So we are doing 12s. These are all 13s. Okay, now... As I mentioned in that review video, these have thicker lines than Belba families. And to me, they are much easier to do. On the other hand, the thicker lines, some may feel it detracts a little bit from the picture. I really don't. Um, it, you know, these are mosaic pictures. So if you wanted to try the three by three um, and Belva family books just kind of scared you might want to give this one a try because these are easy now I love doing the X method yeah I know that um, but I also think these this book would be easier to color in solid also so yeah now this one is vintage car, so I am really hoping, hoping that uh, he comes out with more of these three millimeter square books. Love them. One moment, please. Yeah, alrighty. So, yeah. I am doing well. Still trying to get settled. So much to do yet. Oh my goodness sakes. <laughs> oh my heavens. Today is Sunday, so I am hoping on getting this up yet today. And it's getting late already. I wanted to get an earlier start. But nothing was going right this morning. Oh my gosh. It was just one thing after another. Just trying to get my new cable boxes hooked up and activated. I couldn't activate them manually online. And yeah, had to go through Spectrum. All that always takes forever. And the one TV was not cooperating and uh then I was having problems with my recording equipment and the setup and oh. 
And I was having problems with my printer. <laughs> I had to reconnect everything to the internet. Yeah. So, not quite sure how long this color and chat will be. I do have some other videos to make yet. Because I am so running behind. But we are slow but sure. Getting a little more settled. There's just, you know, there's so many things to put together yet and hang and, uh, you know, as far as getting shelves on the walls and we <laughs> paint, I painted yesterday, Heather helped me, uh, painted the living room. So that's why I wasn't able to record yesterday. Got that done by mid-afternoon and then Bob started working on the bracket or brace, whatever you want to call it, to mount the TV on the wall. <laughs> yeah, that did not go too well. That took hours and hours. It just was not fitting correctly and trying to find the studs in the walls. Stud finder was not working real well and he's got he has two different ones, and yeah, neither one was working too well. So, yeah. People getting upset around here, left and right. Things just don't go right. Things are never easy, are they? They just don't, you know, click into place. There's always got to be some things that, uh, you know takes so much longer than what you think it's going to take you. You know, the job that, that should take only, you know, maybe an hour or something ends up being four hours long, and it's like, I don't got time for that. <laughs> but he did also on Saturday while Heather and I were painting, got my new stove in. Well, first he got the old one out by himself on a dolly and managed to get it out in the garage and then he got the new one in. I didn't even know he was doing all that. And yeah, got it all hooked up. Now there should have been a gas kit, a gas kit, a gas line kit with the stove. No, of course not. So then he had to run to Wassa for that. And ugh, always something. But he did manage to get the stove hooked up. So now I got my beautiful new stove. So I'll get to cook supper tonight in a little bit. <laughs> uh, on my brand new stove. Whoop. And yeah, as far as my mouth, <laughs> still talking a little funny. I do have my upper plate in, and I had gone to the dentist for a fitting on Friday. And, you know, they adjusted them and stuff and made them feel so much better. And then they put what's called a comfort liner in. Oh my gosh, what a difference. Holy cow. They fit so much better. And with my mouth healing and stuff now, it's, yeah, feeling much better. The only problem <laughs> is my bottom plate just does not want to stay put. So I don't have it in right now. <laughs> That's why I'm still talking kind of funny. My S's don't come out real well. So I'm still not able to eat real well, but I guess one day at a time. So we got to start working with some uh, stuff I never thought I would say. <laughs> Polygrip and there's so many different kinds. It's like, which kind works? And she said, well, everybody's different. You just have to play around and see which one works best for you. And I'm like, that's not a good answer. 
I'm sure that stuff is not cheap. I haven't bought any yet. But, you know, you buy a whole tube of one and then it doesn't work for you. So then you go and you buy a whole tube of another kind. So hopefully I will find something that works good right off the bat. And I'll be able to actually start chewing some food. <laughs> All the luxuries in life. Chewing food. Never thought I'd say that either. Wow, right. Anyhow, enough of me whining and complaining. How's the weather by you guys? Oh, it was so gorgeous on Friday. We were in the mid to upper 70s. Yes, I said 70s. Here in Wisconsin. It was unreal. Just gorgeous. Kind of windy, but you know, really helped to uh, bring down a lot of the leaves. Holy cow. But uh, yeah, it was just, and even yesterday, it was in the 60s, so it was still really nice. But of course, what goes up must come down. <laughs> and our temps are going to be falling a big time. Because, of course, here in Wisconsin, you know, we go above normal, but then we always have to go back below normal. So it's going to start getting cold here again. But my heater did get delivered the other day. I haven't even tested it out. Bob put it together and everything, and it's up in my bedroom, but I haven't really had a need to use it yet because it was so nice out. But now, with it uh, getting cool out again, um, my feetsies are actually kind of cold underneath the desk here. I have to get my slippers out. That, uh, yeah, with the bedroom door shut, it always, you know, gets colder in there anyhow in my bedroom. So, I think, yeah, either tonight or tomorrow night, we're going to be uh, testing out that... Uh, oil heater. If you listen to my last color and chat, I was talking about how I had bought an oil heater because they're supposed to be so efficient. It's just a slower heat, you know. It won't be kicking out hot air immediately like a, a typical space heater. So I think I'm just gonna, it's a programmable one, so I probably would just program it to kick in, you know, maybe like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Because I typically don't go to bed till midnight. Or I'll put it on, it's got uh, economy mode or econ, something like that. And it will just keep it at a steady, you know, temp, whatever you specify it at. I don't need it real warm in there. I'm not in the bedroom much at all anyhow. And when I go to sleep, I like it cooler anyhow. So I can snuggle down underneath the blankets. It's the only good thing about winter. No. <laughs> There's a couple good things. I can snuggle under blankets. There's no bugs smashing on your windshield and getting your windshield all dirty. There's no tractors on the road that you have to slow way down and then have to swerve around. <laughs> Only in Wisconsin, right? Um, there's, hmm, there's no mosquitoes. <laughs> Yeah, other than that, not a lot of other good things about winter. It's pretty at, at Christmas time. Well, not always. We've, we've had some brown Christmases, we call them, where there's no snow on the ground for Christmas. But, yeah, we haven't had one of those Christmases in a long time. Past few Christmases, we've had a lot of snow on the ground. 
Boy, this winter better not be like the last two. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we broke records the past couple of winters. We don't need to be doing that every year. Oh, this last winter, I think, was the absolute worst. And this is, I can see the sun's going away. I'm going to turn my light on underneath here. Pardon my arm. Is that too bright? I know what these uh, squares, it, I'm not sure if it's going to be driving your eyes bazonky. Bazonky? Is that a word? <laughs> so yeah, it's the sun is starting to go down, so it's it's getting a little bit dark in here. And the light behind me, I mean, yes, I actually have an overhead light. I sounded like Count Dracula when I said that. There's a no light. But it's really dim. I want to have, I want to see if we have some brighter bulbs to put in here. Because, yeah, it's really dim. There's only one problem with having that overhead light. Because it's behind me. Um, you know, of course, on the ceiling. <laughs> But then it can kind of cast shadows down on my desk. So maybe I don't want it any brighter. I don't know. Because I don't want it to cast too much shadow on here while I'm coloring. You know, especially coloring chats where I'm, you know, in closer. So if you're finding that the lighting and you know everything else as far as recording you know sound the setup everything if if there's a problem with anything please let me know in the comments below because i'm still trying to get settled with my setup here in my new office so yes i would very much appreciate any feedback if there are any problems and I will try to correct them if at all possible most everything is correctable but not everything unfortunately I mean I have tried this lighting versus that lighting and I mean, I had it pretty down pat in the other house because I had the patio door off behind me to the left. Well, now I have a window right beside me over here, and then there's a window at the end of my desk over there, which I don't see at all because my riser is blocking that one. But yeah, with having this window right here, it's brighter, of course, when the sun is out. And as of yet, I do not have any blinds or curtains or anything up. So, just kind of have to go with uh, whatever Mother Nature is throwing at us. As far as lighting. And yeah, the sun was out. But it, it decided to uh, go take a snooze. And then it's going to decide it's going to be gone for the day. So <laughs> its shift is over. And I don't know, that lazy sun in wintertime, its shift gets shorter and shorter. <laughs> Jeez. And the moon's shift is getting longer and longer. It's another reason I hate winter. <laughs> Our days are so short. I don't like short days. I like having it light out till, you know, 8, 9 o'clock at night. Not this 4, 4.30 stuff. It isn't quite that short now yet, of course, but it's getting there. You can already tell how short the days are getting. So, yeah. 
Let's see, what else is going on? What's going on in your neck of the woods? Anything? Of course, you may all have heard Wisconsin's COVID cases are absolutely through the roof. It is just unreal. We've been breaking records every day as far as the number of cases being reported in Wisconsin. We have had a ton here in Marathon County, right here. Okay, let's go on to 13 then, and 13 is goldenrod. And yeah, my daughter, I don't know if I mentioned this in the, in the last coloring chat. If I did, I apologize if I'm repeating. My youngest daughter works in the COVID unit in the hospital here in town, well, in Wassa. And I was talking to her the other day because it was her birthday earlier this week. And uh, so I was, you know, asking her how overwhelmed, you know, the hospital was because I knew how many cases there have been around here. And she says, yeah, they're just totally overwhelmed. They actually had to open a whole nother ward on another floor uh, for another COVID ward. And they still have been having to turn people away. Isn't that sad? Uh, to, you know, actually be needing to be in the hospital because of COVID and then they don't even have room for you. Oh my heavens. And now our governor, um, because, you know, we're having such a shortage of beds and stuff for these people has, um, down by West Alice, which is in southern Wisconsin, they're opening up, um, well, they have built, I should say, it's a temporary, what do they call it now? I can't remember the terminology. But it just has, you know, temporary sections of where you can put patients, the not so serious, you know, cases, but still needing hospitalization so that it can alleviate, you know, all the, some of the burden, not all, some of the burden on um, the hospitals that are just so overwhelmed because, you know, some of them, of course, are sicker than others. There are some that, you know, desperately need 24-hour care, you know, with them being on respirators and whatnot, and some don't need that level of care. So this, what is it called, like a triage, um, you know, is going to be able, I forgot how many bed facility they set up, but it's going to be able to handle those that are not quite as serious of cases. But yeah, we have just been having thousands a day, which is, yeah, it has been setting new records. It just, oh, and yet people still aren't taking it seriously. And I know, you know, maybe some of you watching this are of that, you know, mind, what do you want to say? Mindset, I guess, where you don't take it as seriously and you don't believe in face masks and I know I talked about this in my past color and chat, so I don't want to dwell on it, but, you know, we all have our, our beliefs, we all have our opinions, and we're all entitled to our opinion, but, I mean, facts are facts, and I guess I'd just rather be safe than sorry, and the statistics speak for themselves. But anyhow, that's enough of that. Won't We won't dwell on that because, like I said, not everybody agrees with that philosophy. So, But yeah, I always worry about my daughter being on that COVID unit. 
you know, being exposed there every single day. And uh, I know they do take a lot of precautions. You know, they have their PPE and, you know, everything is sanitized and sanitized. And But still, you know, there are so many healthcare workers that are getting sick from it too, so still have to be concerned. Anybody on the front lines, anywhere from grocery stores to any kind of store, I guess, restaurants, you name it. You know, our, uh, we haven't shut down, you know, Wisconsin hasn't shut down completely again, but they did just limit the restaurants again. They can still be open, but they can only have 25% capacity. So that's, yeah, that's going to be really hurting business again. But what are you going to do? It's, you know, it's sad. It really is sad. It's just such an unfortunate thing. Here is hoping that 2021 brings much, much better things than 2020, right? Do I hear a hell yeah? <laughs> oh my goodness. This is just, yeah, this has been a year from hell. And doesn't look to be an end in sight at this point, but who knows? Who knows what the future will hold? Has anybody heard in your area, um, as far as Black Friday, what's going to be happening with Black Friday? I haven't heard what they're going to be doing here. Because um, I can imagine they don't want mobs and mobs of people in the stores for Black Friday. And I know a lot of people do uh, the virtual. They just, you know, order online now. But there are still a lot of people who just fly to the stores on uh, Thanksgiving. These poor people, they got to work on Thanksgiving. So, you know, people can go and shop on Black Friday. <clears throat> Friday, not Thursday. Thank you very much. So, yeah, I have not heard what they're going to be doing for Black Friday. I wouldn't think they could do their normal. Like I said, it just wouldn't be safe to have hundreds and hundreds of people you know, crowded at the doors, waiting for the doors to open. And then have them all, you know, flooding the store all at once. It just does not seem like uh, that should happen. So, yeah, let me know if uh, you've heard in your area what they will be doing for Black Friday shopping. I don't know if it's, you know, each state on their own, if it's going to be a state-by-state -state decision or store-by-store. Store. I'm sure it won't be a federally mandated thing because every state is different. Some states, of course, are much, have, you know, a lot more cases now than others, so... But, yeah, interesting, right? I know uh, our family won't be getting together for Thanksgiving. Usually, all of us and my sisters and brother, we all get together at my sister's. So it's a huge gathering. But, and I haven't talked to my sisters yet, but I would imagine that's not happening this year. Which is unfortunate because sometimes that's the only time I get to see a lot of them. Like my nieces and nephews and their kids and stuff. I don't get to see them very often the way it is. And now I haven't seen them, boy, 
probably since last year, maybe some, some of them I did, but yeah, a lot of them I have not seen for a long, long time. So at least getting everybody together, you know, on Thanksgiving, yeah, it, it, it was a huge crowd because there are six of us kids. And so then we have all of our kids and then their kids. <laughs> So, yeah, it's a lot of people, but it's so nice to see everybody and catch up and see how big the kids have gotten. <laughs> and, yeah, I like I said, I, I can imagine that that's not going to be happening, especially with the way Wisconsin is going right now, unless we do a complete turnaround. Yeah, and I... I don't foresee that happening, so unfortunate. I think our immediate family, you know, my kids and their kids, will still get together for Christmas. But it's a question of where. <laughs> I had no problem doing Christmas at my house when I had the other house. <laughs> now? Because <laughs> even in my other house, it was kind of like, okay, let's set up this six-foot table, and they can eat, you know, in the living room with that table. Then they have my dining room table to sit at, and, you know, the couch and the chairs, and found room for everybody somewhere. Well, yeah, now I don't have a dining room, and my living room is much smaller. So, and before I had always set up like a, a six-foot table um, for all the food. And then, you know, the people would just go on down and, you know, pick up what they wanted. Well, yeah, I won't have room in my kitchen to put up a table, but the good thing... <laughs> I have more counter space in this kitchen than I did previously. So I think I could put all the food on the countertops and not need that table in there. But I still have no idea where people would sit to eat. And then for opening gifts, a lot of the people would sit in the dining room in my other house because the dining room and living room were kind of like all attached it was all open so it worked really good well yeah that wouldn't work in this house so again i am not sure what's going to happen i have to even think where the heck i would put a tree i would just have to get a small one and put it in the corner now that the tv's up on the wall that opens up that one wall where it was sitting on the floor on a TV stand. So that helps a lot. <laughs> and I told Bob, I said, that's the reason I want the TV up on the wall. It frees up precious real estate on the floor. <laughs> I actually have some room to put the kids' toys and stuff now. Still don't have the living room all put back to where it should be. Since painting yesterday, we still have to move the chairs and the couch back into place. And the kitty tower, because they love their cat tower over by the window. Oh my gosh. These cats have to take turns in the cat tower. Especially in the morning when the sun is streaming in. And now I'll have one in the top thing, which is their favorite perch where they sleep. And then I'll actually have another one sleeping on the step down from there where you would never see two cats on that thing at once. Now, either Callie or Misty are up in the top one usually. And then midnight, a lot of times, is just laying in the sun on the second step on there. I never used to see Midnight lay up in that top perch and go to sleep. And he sits up there all the time when it's available. 
<laughs> when one of the other two don't have it. Yeah, it's in high demand, I tell you. And had to move it into the kitchen for painting. Well, yeah, they found it in there too right away, and they still kind of fight over who's the top man in there. <laughs> Who gets the perch next? As soon as one leaves, oh, there comes the other one. So, yeah, I am glad that I moved it into the living room. It's kind of a pain in the butt back behind what's well, back behind Bob and our chair, you know, so it sits back behind because that's where it was in the other house, and they really liked being, you know, right there by us, or at least by me because they're my big babies. <laughs> And then they can hop down on the back of my chair and then down by me. But, yeah, a little in the way, but it works. It was especially in the way because they had vertical blinds in the living room. So whenever I would open or close them, it would hit the cat tower back there. And I was like, ah. Uh. So... We took down the vertical blinds to paint, and I don't want vertical blinds back up in there, so I'm going to, of course, I can't get horizontal blinds to fit that window because it's so wide. It's a great big panel in the middle, and then there's two thinner windows on the side so the whole thing is really wide and the widest vertical blinds you can get in the stores here anyhow is 72 inches and I need it a little bigger than that plus the window depth is kind of shallow so I can't do an inside mount blind I have to do an outside mount blind so that adds a few inches too so I'll probably need like a mm, probably a good 78 inch to an 80 inch horizontal blind and I did find a custom place online that wasn't actually too atrociously expensive. Of course, they can be, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars. Well, yeah, I ain't spending that for blinds. <laughs> but I thought, yeah, if I'd go with horizontal blinds, the, you know, mini blinds, and then put like a topper or a scarf of some sort around the top, that that would look nice. I loved our cordless blinds that we had in the other house, but you know, where you just push on the bottom. You don't have to have the cords on the side. Really nice and convenient. Can't have that here, though, especially for that big window. Because the cat tower's back there, and, you know, our chairs, the back of our chairs are right in front of that window. We wouldn't be able to reach around and push up the blind. So I have to get a corded mini blind set there and then I want a coordinated one of course I have a smaller window on another wall just kind of a normal size window I guess you'd call it and you know of course I want the mini blind for the small window to match the big so I would get both of them corded Levi wouldn't be able to get at either one because the smaller window is behind the couch. So he shouldn't be able to get at either one of the sets of cords. So that would be a good thing. How long are we on? Wow, it's only a half an hour. I think I paused once there though, but I don't think it was on real long then. Holy cow. Well, like I said, I'm not going to be able to do a real long coloring chat today. I am so far behind on videos. I have a ton to record, and I'm just not going to be able to get to them all today. And 
yeah, with <laughs> all the problems of today, I uh, wasn't able, I was starting a couple hours later than I wanted to in the first place. And yeah, I have a bunch of diamond painting unboxings. And, you know, these companies have been waiting for a few weeks already for me to do the unboxings and boy, I just haven't been able to get at them. I feel bad. So, I think I'll finish up these 13s and we'll call it good for today. Then I will go make supper. Big pot of chili. Mmm. I think that's actually something I'll be able to eat. <laughs> and that is one of Bob's favorite meals. And of course, he bought extra hamburger because his other favorite thing is hamburgers on a bun. So I'm going to make him a whole bunch of hamburgers. And then the kids can also have some during the week because... They both love hamburgers, too, so. So, I will be going and doing that very shortly. There. Now, if you're actually watching this color in chat, that probably was rather boring. Because <laughs> I only did a couple colors. But it's, as you can see, the sunset in the background. This must be a cloud. Not quite sure what that car is going to be yet, but aren't them colors gorgeous? Oh, like I said, I just love the color palette that Such and Such Dave put together for this book. If you look back here, you know, number one and two, this beautiful teal and then a turquoise and then a light blue. I mean, these three are so pretty together. The hardest thing are the pinks. There's a lot of pinks in here. And with the uh, Ink Onyx, I was able, there's a really good color that matches watermelon. And these here colors, the problems I had was the peach and the salmon. All the other ones I was able to match up really well. But yeah, those two, hmm. But they don't have to match exactly, right? I'm just... A perfectionist and I want it as close as possible and yada 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 right but yeah I uh, I have them matched up pretty good and then I have them in this case this is my color by number case <laughs> starts out with my twi markers and this is for a Belba family then it goes to my ink onyx this is for a Belba family and then starts with Ink Onyx, and this is for the Sach and Sach Deva book. So that's why I'm hoping he's going to come out more with, you know, this color palette. If he doesn't, then I won't be, of course, keeping them in this case. But when you keep the pens separate like that, it's so nice, especially if, like, you miss one right here, which I invariably do. You know, I'm going on to number four, and then I find a number three that I missed. If they're already in order in the case, you know exactly which one it is. Whereas when I was picking it from the whole set, it's like, you know, I was looking on my list to see what number it was and then looking through the case, seeing which one it is. It's a pain. So, yeah, this works really good. <laughs> I know, right? The things that excite us. <laughs> All righty. I'm going to leave it there. Again, this is a little bit of a shorter color and chat for me. Not too bad, though. Um, so I thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed this color and chat. I am hoping we can chat a little bit longer next weekend. Um, I, I'm going to have to record after supper yet and get some more done. But yeah, if you enjoyed this color and chat, please hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to my channel. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. And as always, happy coloring. Bye, guys.